Since getting my license, I have been tempted to take on a build of a remote antenna tuner and switch. And even more so, to power and control everything through the coax cable. I have been very pleased to use the Yaesu FT891 with resonant antennas, but there was one thing bugging me. I got this one intriguing function I did not come around to use until lately, namely the Active Tuning Antenna System, aka ATAS. In my previous video I gave you a glimpse of my latest project, a motorized antenna loading coil that is compatible with ATAS enabled transceivers or can be used with other transceivers using an extra control box. And I must say, for my humble YouTube channel, the response was massive. There are many hams out there that want such a system, and that's for a good reason. Because it has some great benefits. Effortless tuning, you can tune while sitting down, no need to get up to manually adjust coil position or antenna length. Tuning close to the antenna so you don't lose effect to heat in the coax cable. It is compatible with the Yaesu Active Antenna Tuning System. With no externally moving parts, it may be sealed and is protected from the environments. You can tune the same antenna for multiple bands. I have tested it for 80 to 10 meters, but I don't see why it wouldn't take on other bands in some configuration, because it is flexible uh, in that you can connect any length of radials and uh, radiating elements. And it's cheap if you build it yourself. And that's the thing. You can not buy this pre-built. And it is not an easy build. But if you have what it takes and are determined, you will harvest the benefits. The prototype proved this to be a viable project. As one of my viewers put it, it got potential. Because that's the thing. There are still some issues I have to resolve to have a reliable solution and before I would recommend anyone to copy my design. But tag along as we take a look inside and maybe you can help me improve and resolve my issues. Your comments are very much appreciated. The system is contained in a 50mm PVC pipe with 3D printed end caps. In one end you connect the coax and ground plane, in the other end the radiating element. The end caps are just friction fitted for now, but may be glued for weatherproof in the future. To dismantle the antenna, we have to unscrew the binding post for the radiating element. By pushing the top, we may pull out the contents. What you can now see is the coil and circuit board. But wait, where are the moving parts? Where do we tap the coil? I made an early design decision to tap the coil on the inside to make it fit inside the PVC pipe. By disconnecting a few wires from the circuit board, we are now able to pull it apart and reveal an axle with a slider to tap the inside of the coil. In the top end, we find a microswitch and a ball bearing. In the under end is a microswitch and a motor connected to the axle. The slider contains two spring-loaded metal beads. The signal from the coax will enter the bottom close to the motor and connects to the axle through this brush. From the axle, the spring carries the signal through the beads into the coil. The top end of the coil is connected to the radiating binding post. And now for some issues. When tuning, I noticed the SWR would sometimes jump up and down. I would expect a smoother tuning. Even before putting it all together, I had my concerns about these tiny springs that carry the current from the axle to the beads. And also the beads running along the coil would snag a bit. One way to overcome this snagging is using a bigger bead than the 4.5 mm I had laying around. A bigger radius would ensure a lesser angle of attack on the coil. Even better, I could make a skid with a flat area that did not snag at all. I also would like to carry the current through a wire rather than the springs. So this is what I came up with. 
a skid made of a piece of copper pipe that connects uh, by wire to a copper piece that rub against the axle. While testing this skid, I still found that there was a high resistance in the coil and that this would vary as I moved the axle. I found that the bottom brush taking the signal from the coax to the axle was poor design. It added a lot of resistance and also friction that made the axle hard to move. So a redesign was in place. And this is what I came up with. A spring loaded piece of copper pipe that rub against the axle and connects by wire to the coax. And now for the testing. Now the tuning is smooth and calm. The motor has less stress, the resistance stays low and the current required to drive the motor to turn the axle dropped from 120 milliamps to 80 milliamps. Great! In my next video we're gonna take a look at the circuit for the control board of the coil and I have some improvements to make there as well. If you want to take a sneak peek you may head over to the European ham radio show where I was a guest explaining more about this antenna. See you next time!